Hello from um, Accrington in Lancashire. Uh, today's a beautiful sunny day. I hope that Northern Ireland is getting the same weather. Um, it's nice to be doing this reflection again. Um, I'm just, uh, I was thinking that I would speak a little bit about being anxious in this present climate of the um, coronavirus pandemic and in the world itself. Um, just as lockdown uh, was starting here in the UK, um, these words jumped out at me from a magazine, Be Brave. And I really knew that God was saying to me, be brave. You're going to need to be brave in these times because there's going to be a lot of changes. And um, I was feeling quite anxious at the time. And in Deuteronomy 31, verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear, nor be afraid. For the Lord your God goes with you. And... Um, that is um, very comforting for me to know that God is with me through every step of the way of life. Um, we do live in times which do make us anxious and fearful. And life for me has been a bit like a roller coaster. One day I'm up and the next day I'm down. There's so much happening in the world. Um, apart from the pandemic, there's lots of other things happening in our lives as well. Lives, you know, life can be difficult. And when Jesus was here on earth, it was no diff different for him. He knew the, and knows the trials and tribulations of life. As he faced his greatest trial, which was his death, he had been speaking at length to his disciples of what was to come that he was going to be going back to the Father, that they would be fearful, that they would scatter, and that he would be left alone here. These are the words from John 16, verse 32 and 33. Indeed, the hour is coming, yes, has now come, that you will be scattered, each to his own, and will leave me alone. And yet I'm not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Jesus spoke these tender words in the midst of him being persecuted and facing the most horrific death. He spoke words of peace to his disciples, to his friends. This is our God. This is who God is. He wasn't thinking of the sacrifice that was to come for him himself. He was thinking beyond that to his victory. He was also thinking of our peace. And he said, in me, you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. There's a song called No Longer Slaves. It's a very special song to me. Because it's to me, it speaks of God's presence and love in the midst of fear and anxiety. The opening words are, you unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. Those words, you unravel me. Sometimes when I get um, anxious, then everything feels confused, a bit like a ball of string that's all knotted and it's not wound properly. And God unravels that and it brings peace into my heart. This song was given to me when I was in Africa. And um, I had just had a phone call the day before 
and the phone calls to say that the visa I'd submitted to stay another three years um, was not going to be extended because I unknowingly had sent in the wrong form. Um, I was told that um, it would be better for me not to leave the country um, because now I was um, called, deemed an illegal alien. But if I did leave the country and uh, wanted to come back, then I wouldn't be allowed back because I um, would be seen as an undesirable person. At the time that I received this news, I was sat with a friend in her kitchen around a table and she'd heard this conversation and both of us were in shock. I was quite shocked as well at my um, uh, response to this and I stood up from the chair and I said, I'm not an illegal alien. I am a child of God. And now I can laugh about this, but it was a real turning point for me in my Christian journey and in my life. Um, because it gave, it made me see who I wasn't and who I was. I am a child of God. It was a really important point to own that identity as a child of God. The words of the song um, go on to say, I'm no longer a slave of fear. I am a child of God. And in these anxious times, that is what I hold on to. I am a child of God. He holds me in the palm of his hand. He is my father and I need not fear. However, there are times when I do get anxious and I do fear um, because I'm a, an, a human being. And even Jesus felt those things. We're not robots. So what is the way out of um, this pattern of anxiety and fear? Um, well, I see a signpost and on that signpost, it's a one way signpost and it says on it, Jesus, pray. He is the way and um, he will answer our prayers. When I first became a Christian, that was on my 40th birthday, it's quite a while ago now, um, I was given a scripture um, from Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 to 7. It's a well-known scripture. It says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. These are the most beautiful words. And there was such a gift. Recently, during um, this pandemic, uh, I, I go for a walk early in the morning so that I don't meet people with my dog um, because I'm actually shielding and I've had to stay in um, and not go out in society. But going in the morning is safer. And sometimes I do feel a bit fearful because it's lonely um it's in the woods, so you know it's it's sometimes a bit frightening. And um the word these words come to my mind, do not be anxious or afraid. And that's kept happening to me recently. And when we're anxious, our minds can become divided, our minds and our hearts can become divided. And what I mean by that is that instead of uh, receiving the love and the words from God, we receive negative thoughts and become very fearful and can get low mood and depressed. And uh, our hearts are not with God. And I see our hearts um, a bit like a cup um, and then it needs to be tilted towards God 
Because God is showering us with love and blessings and peace all the time. You know, when we see a beautiful flower or a beautiful sun or a rainbow or receive something, some kind words, sometimes if we're not in the right place, we can't receive those things. We don't see them because our hearts are not tilted towards God. That they can be tilted, can be tilted and receive worldly things, negative things, um, and that makes us angry and anxious and and distracted. So just to think about these words in this scripture, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You know, when we're in the frame of mind of anxiety and fear, nothing can change that, only God. We can try and try, but when that machine is going of being anxious and fearful and our belief something bad's going to happen or we're very low in mood, if you pray and ask God in to help you and to give you peace, then he does. It says that he will guard our hearts and minds because yes, our hearts and minds need protecting. Our hearts and minds are the ways in which God speaks to us and blesses us. And we can't receive if we're not tilted towards him, if, you know, it's not being protected and it's looking at something and being distracted in the trials and tribulations. The battle we're in is for our hearts and minds and the enemy is trying all the time to direct them away from God so that we don't receive the blessings. Anxiety and fear are warning signs. They are normal in this world and they are there to say, look, something's happening here. There's a battle going on. They are signs to say to us, pray. I'm here, pray to me. In Exodus 14, chapter, four, chapter 14, verse 14, the words, for the battle is God's, we just need to be still. To be still in the presence of God and receive his love, his presence, his peace. We see this when Jesus visited Martha and Mary. Martha had asked him to her home, and she became distracted because she was busy, probably making food or something. And she said to Jesus, Jesus, ask Mary to come and help me. Mary was sat at the feet of Jesus. Martha had got one thing right. She had gone to the source to get help, Jesus. But Jesus said to her, Martha, Martha, you have become distracted. Mary has chosen the better part. You see, Mary's heart was tilted towards Jesus, receiving what he was giving. Um, Martha was more interested in guess, being busy. She was going to give, and that's a good thing. But she was distracted. Her heart wasn't in the right place. You see, in this prayer... Um, from Philippians that Paul wrote. He wrote, Be anxious for nothing. In everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, make your requests to God. It's a prayer to be made humbly. Supplication means to make it humbly, be respectful. And thanking God, thank God within the prayer. Because God is going to give you the peace that you need. Be anxious for nothing. Let your request be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So we pray to Jesus, who is with the Father, and Jesus will make the prayer to the Father for us on our behalf. Isn't that wonderful that Jesus is doing that?
So, this prayer is an enabling prayer. It's a prayer to cope in the tribulations of life. As we pray to Jesus, he will ask the Father. In the midst of the trial, we will receive peace to be able to cope. And give thanks to God for this grateful, be grateful to him for this you know, precious gift that we can receive. And remember, tilt your heart and your mind towards Jesus. Then he can fill, fill them with his peace, his love, as we trust in him. Amen. Beyond Valvoli, with a melody, you surround me with a song of deliverance of my enemy to hold my feet upon. Now no longer. Thank you.